You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 442 for Sunday the 12th of February 2023. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my jolly good chum Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Hello there Jane. Hello there, Michelle. I'm, I'm going to say two things now. Okay. I'm going to wish you an early happy Valentine's, or should Aww. that be Galentine's or Palentine's or whatever. And then also ask our podcast family to give you a great big hug, because you're not very well at the moment. You've got all bunged up nose and things, haven't you? Yeah, I'm a poorly puppet at the moment. <laughs> you, she needs lots of care and attention. I can barely see anything, because for some reason a medication I'm on contraindicated with the virus that I've got and it was a good job I listened to a few good friends last night saying get yourself to the doctor because otherwise my doctor said he'd have been admitting me to hospital today so uh, yay wish wish Michelle well soon people yeah I am treating myself with that well established get well medication of Battenberg cake (gasps) answer to everything Ooh, we can't beat a bit of good good old bit of battenberg do you know if there's anything wrong in the world there are two things that'll cure you go on then a wet blue paper towel <laughs> yeah educators out there will get that reference yeah and battenberg or basically anything with an almond marzipani cakey jammy lovelessness feeling and then i would say you've got to have a good old proper cup of yorkshire tea to <sighs> knock it down with and Come on, Americans, what's this about putting ice in your tea? It's got no. to be served with milk. Milk and hot. Oh, God, yeah. Definitely. And it's got to be a good colour as well, Michelle, none of that weak stuff. But on the opposite, Jane, it can't be the colour of dark chocolate. It's got to be a nice, silky, caramelly colour. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it, how we all have our particular ways of taking... Tea is such a contentious subject in the UK. I have told you before, when I started out at a company I was like the sort of receptionist and I was the lowest of the low at the time Mm. and I was in charge of making beverages and the person in charge literally gave me a colour chart of how he liked (laughs) his tea and it it changed in the morning it needed to be darker than in the afternoon it needed to be with lemon it was really weird I'm glad I like my coffee black and it's nice and straightforward. Absolutely. <laughs> and obviously that coffee has to be a tinge of Disney-ness, whether it be Joffrey's, whether it be Mickey's special, I don't mind what. Or whether it be in a, in a suitably themed mug. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> right, so we do have a podcast. Last week we, we treated you to four fabulous tracks from the new album by Tom and Mean. Even villains have a soft side. And (laughs) I must just say that it has been my music of meditation over the last few days, listening and luxuriating and linking it to past memories of being in the theme park. Oh, that's a nice way to meditate. It is, because as I said on the show last week, whenever I hear one or two of them, I start swaying. (laughs) Gaston-esque. I've got visions now. Let's move away from that. We will close off today's show with another piece of music from that said same album. If you want to go and get it to yourself, it is all available on that there internet. Go and visit Tom and Mean Music. It will guide you how to you can listen to it. And our Patreons have had a sneaky peeks at the tracks as well. So, cool. yeah. Um, podcast, Jane. It, that's what we're doing, yes. There's been a lot of cast members trying out Tron. There has indeed. I must admit, I, I think I spent most of yesterday watching various um, vloggers out there partaking. There's, there's an awful lot of vloggers have cast members as friends, is yeah. what I will say. There's also a lot of vloggers who have quite spacious, large calves as well, by the looks of it. Yes. I mean, this is something that had been hinted at, and I think I'd seen something the other week commenting on the fact that they because they were using the exact same vehicles that they got in Shanghai. And obviously the population in Shanghai is a slightly different um, demographic to what we have over in uh, the US and the West. So obviously they're a lot more diminutive, both height-wise and girth-wise, shall we say. 
So I know there were, there's concerns that there's going to be issues with people being able to get, well, fit on the on these light cycles oh. and get on them as well because it wasn't something I'd fully appreciated and it was only um, possibly watching the same vlog as, as your good self. The, the fact that you have to cross over the track if you're on one side of the light cycle and then obviously getting on the light cycle it's like riding a bike bike so you've got to have that flexibility of hip movement shall we say to be able to excuse a phrase cock one's leg um over said bike bicycle to get on it and then it's quite a peculiar position to be sat in as well yeah i must admit i saw quite a few um vlogs on the old youtubes yesterday and it just goes to show that there were a lot of people being up in their heart and saying, I'm too big for this attraction, I'm too big. And the hate that they got from cruel people. Mm. Absolutely. Some of the comments were just uncalled for when they were trying to do a nice civil thing, by, like saying, look, if you've got a similar body shape to me, let's get your expectations in check. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. And, yeah. oh, hats out to those guys i really do think they they've got some horrible people out there that have been so mean yeah to them. i mean there's no there's no call for that at all is there and I, I say i think a lot of these people were wanting to get that information out there to give people fair warning there are, there is a car that's on the end of some of the tra uh, trains so that you are sitting in a more of a con traditional roller coaster sort of environment for want of a better phrase i think the concern is that I think the implication being that maybe every other train has one of these cars. So if you do need that car, you, you're going to have to um, understand there's going to be a little bit of a wait to get to that. So if that is an issue for you, um, I think I think that's where people were coming from. It's going to be a case of saying, well, look, there is an alternative, but you may have to wait. And also that element of it. I think I saw one person say that they'd ridden with somebody and they commented that they fe it felt quite uncomfortable, the position and like yeah. around the calves and everything. And then they commented that, that, that they'd been fortunate enough to ride it in Shanghai and said that actually they felt that the more they rode it, the easier it got. And it's just that thing of, of it's because it's not a natural position that you go into for a roller coaster. So that element of you've got you kind of got to get used to it a little bit, I suppose. I suppose the good thing is it's not a very long ride. So perhaps that's why it's not a very long ride if the position itself is not the most comfiest of positions to be in yeah listeners have you had the opportunity to go on this ride system yet mm. i know the lovely cat and lewis from this down under have and they are incredibly excited at the prospect of getting back to walt disney world to be able to go on this attraction having ridden it on the original incarnation over in shanghai I have to say, I think the looking at the tr the queue and the the loading area and and all the bits and bobs of footage that I saw yesterday, I'm very excited. It looks fab. I'm very excited by it all. And I I must admit, the music is absolutely that the album for Tron Legacy. If, if you're into that kind of music, is amazing. So I think it's just very a very atmospheric looking ride. Even if you don't particularly know what Tron is about, I think the aesthetics will probably win you over anyway. Yeah, and my husband literally has that soundtrack on all the time when we're <laughs> out in his car. He has actually stopped playing Christmas music now, so we are listening to a lot oh, well. of Daft Punk at the moment. So, so. So, what, so what do you get, Michelle? Do you get about three or four months of, of Daft Punk and then about eight of Christmas? <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> he starts looking at me as soon as the Easter eggs have been eaten. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on, next yeah. topic. Mm. Um, the Disney Parks blog has published a special Disney pocket guide to the Disney fantasy and they are going to do it throughout the fleet of Disney Cruise Line. Ooh, that'd so this, be interesting. Well, I thought it'd be interesting for you to help you with your mm. upcoming trip planning and it talks about, you know, the boarding process, the dining process the entertainment something that is a bit more special for you adults because obviously you're traveling as a party of two we are indeed yes and then about the fun and games you can have on board with the midship detective agency yes i had read a little bit about this i'm quite intrigued by that 
Well, it's all there for you, my lovely. Hopefully the Disney Dream one will be out very, very soon. I will keep my eyes peeled, as they say. And Michelle will be spending a lot of time with you, persuading you to book some of those reservations for the upscale dining. No doubt, <laughs> no doubt Michelle will be. Whether Michelle will um, win out in her convincing is yet to be seen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My trip. Wow. Oh, yes. Last week it hit the 60-day mark and we all know no. what that means. 60 know. days. I wow. Know. So it was ADR day. Aha. Uh-huh. And what have you done ADR-wise? Pray well, tell. We haven't as yet booked for Rodeo, Barbecue, Roundup, Woody, Showtime, Jesse, <laughs> whatever, 57 million names I'm never going to get right sure, barbecue okay. thing. We did say on the podcast it did look quite interesting, mm. the menu. Um, it opens on the 23rd of March, my son's birthday, mm-hmm. but there isn't any news as yet about when you can make bookings. So oh, we're okay. checking daily, but we would like to do that on our second day um, mm-hmm. but we shall see mm-hmm. with regards to booking things though i've mm. not gone mad on the old adrs jane have you not no i'm going to be partaking in a a lot of quick service and snackage basically because the flight virtually bankrupt me. <laughs> yeah this is where going to disney at the moment becomes a mathematical nightmare does it not yeah so what I've picked, in my opinion, are the worthy dining venues for me. Oh, okay. So we have Steakhouse 71 for lunch. Nice, yeah. Their onion rings were magnificent. Mm. And that's all I'll be getting. <laughs> Just the onion rings, okay. Just the onion rings. It's all about budget, Jay. Of course. The next place I've booked is Art Smith's Homecoming Kitchen. Uh-huh, yeah. Good now, choice. he did... Last time I was there, last August, the most amazing salad. And you can slightly modify the salads a little bit. So I made it a little bit personal. Mm. And they had grilled peaches and pecans and blue cheese. Amazing. So that, oh, yes, that please. Oh, sounds nice, yeah. We all know last time I was in Walt Disney World, Kona Cafe had not reopened. Mm. So I had to do breakfast at Kona just for those macadamia nut pancakes. Obviously. Yeah. Goes without saying, doesn't it? My travel buddies have forced me into trying a fixed price menu at Sebastian's. Oh, okay. So this is over at Caribbean Beach. I have never eaten there, so it's a new to me reservation. Yeah. It's a fixed price meal of $32, which I didn't think was too bad, to be quite honest. No, that's quite a reasonable amount. Yeah, go on. There are some interesting foods on the menu that sound quite different to what I've ever had offered and I've seen quite a lot of really good um, reviews about it about how it's flavoursome how it's really tasty but apart from my next one which is at Beaches and Cream that is Mm. it which from you know anybody who listened to your previous trip planning and your trip reports will know that's quite a low number for you it is I do not normally like to try and get into these table service restaurants However, there's just nothing that I I think value-wise that I'm going to be able to afford. Like, yes, I'd love to go to Sci-Fi Diner and just get the spinach dip because Mm. that sounds amazing. I'd just like to go here, there and the other and have the main meal. Can't Mm. do that. You know, they sewn me up with California Grill unless I pay an absolute fortune for a fixed price menu. Yeah. I'm not getting in there. And for me, when I used to go and order the children's steak at $20, you know, it was a bargain. Mm. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it, that that money is now having to take such um, an impact on, on any potential plans. Does this mean that you've kind of scouted more around the quick service options, Michelle? Lots of quick service, a lot of lounges particularly. And mm. we'll be mentioning the lounges in an upcoming show where I'll go through some of the top items I've been recommended or had on past trips. But, yeah, quick service, lounges, um, pick-and-go food. I'm even going to visit some different Disney hotels to try some of the offerings on their mm. menu, and that's going to be the Scat Cat, the Scat Cat Club for their beignets. 
Yes, did I see some new beignets that come out this week over oh, there? So exciting. So exciting. And who doesn't love a good old beignet? Everybody loves a good old beignet. You're mad if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> now, this obviously takes me back to park reservations, Jane. Yes. It's quite amusing for me when I look at this spreadsheet that there is one part for some reason that I have literally got to start every day at. You're starting every day at the same park? Apart from three days, yes. Okay. Which um, park are you starting at then? Magic Kingdom. Oh, thank goodness you said that. Yeah. Because <laughs> every day I'm going to try and get a seven o'clock virtual ride queue for Tron. Ah, yes, of course. But then yes, we're into means... the good old virtual queue thing again, aren't we? Yeah, but then this leaves the dilemma. I'm not getting any virtual queues for Epcot because for Guardians of the Galaxy right. because I'm always in the Magic Kingdom and I can't get the, t the one o'clock hit because I can't park up till two. Two. Yeah, I mean, I say it's only just this weekend, isn't it, though, from Disneyland, they've brought forward their park hopping from 1 to 11, which seems to be so much more sensible. Um, if Disney just brought forward it till, you know, a couple of hours, it would just make that much difference, wouldn't it? Because you'd be able to take advantage of those second queue times popping up. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, watching, you know, uh, say going back to the, to the Tron vlogs uh, that have obviously been hitting the old YouTubes these last uh, 24, 48 hours prior to recording and seeing the number of cast members just going through. They didn't need a park reservation. I know they were only allowed, you know, as on a good faith system of going to Tron, doing Tron and then leaving the park. But you watch them all walking in without reservation, without park ticket, etc. And you see the crowds walking down Main Street and you're thinking... Okay, so this park reservation system then, how does that work when you're just letting a load through and you're relying on them not venturing anywhere else in the park post their little trip on Tron? It kind of seems a little bit incongruous with the current system. Well, let's hope the new system gets tweaked to make mm. it a little bit more flexible for people because I know on one of the days someone in our party, because they had an annual pass for their entry to the theme parks, couldn't get entry to the Magic Kingdom on the 4th of April, which is the day that Tron is opening. And they won't be able to get a virtual queue because their first pack is Epcot. So we're just going to have to try and get some Disney magic working on that, I think. Well, let's keep all fingers and toes crossed. A, for that, and B, that, you know, between now and when you go, Shell, that, you know, please, Disney, listen to the good reception you've had over in Disneyland by altering that hopping time and, you know, think about doing the same over... On the other coast, please. Yeah. Okay, so let's hop across the country. Let's go mm -hmm. from east to west and talk Fantasmic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Obviously, the presentation of Fantasmic over in Disneyland is very different because it is done within the actual park, Disneyland, rather than where you're at Hollywood Studios and it's a custom-built custom arena around mm. the water. This is actually a physical part of the theme park which you can go on back and forth throughout the day to go over to the island and stand in New Orleans Square on the cobbles and everything. Mm. I wondered, and I set myself a bit of a question from thinking ahead for August, I want to be able to see Fantasmic in a really good viewpoint. Right. And then I also know... I will be having the minimum amount of time in Disneyland because of the extortionate prices of tickets. Yeah. So I thought, could I pay more to get more? Okay. So there is a package at the Hungry Bear restaurant, which is over in Critter Country. Yeah. And you can have dinner there or a meal mm. anytime between 3pm and 6.45 and then have a reserved area to watch uh, this fireworks show. Okay. So I thought, okay, I'll look into it. So you can pick up your meal anytime between 3 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. You get a voucher into the reserved viewing area for the first performance if it is up to quarter to seven or 7 p.m. till 8.30 for the second show. Mm. The menu 
It says, choose from a down-home menu created just for this event, featuring okay. barbecued pork ribs, grilled mm. salmon salad, or a barbecued half chicken, served with bacon potato salad, seasonal vegetables, a dessert, and a fountain beverage. Or try a plant-based impossible sloppy joe sandwich with seasonal vegetables, fresh fruit, dessert, and fountain beverage. Mm-hmm. Kids meals will also include the barbecued ribs, mac and cheese, and a plant-based impossible sloppy joe slider. Right. Ten and above, it's $35. Children, three to nine, $25. That gets you the meal and the view. Okay. I thought that sounded pretty good to me. I have to say, that was going to be my first reaction as well. I was quite surprised. I was expecting it closer to the 55 to $65 mark for some reason. And I think I'm just so used to that sort of range of price. That's kind of where my brain was going. So $35, I'm relatively happy with that. Now, it doesn't specify anything that's on the current menu for Hungry Bear because I've got the menu in front of me. Okay. It's got a honey spiced chicken sandwich, a barbecue chicken salad, a classic cheeseburger and the impossible cheeseburger. So I can't really say price for price how it works. However, the main entree price is just about $13. So you can have to so assume something similar. Yeah. You would like to think. Plus dessert, plus drink. Yeah. I imagine it's your standard soda fountain type drink rather than your usual. But that's $5.29. So let's say that's $19. Yeah. Of what you've spent. Okay. Yeah. And then on top of that $19, you're getting a dessert of some sort, which I imagine might be a cupcakey type thing. I imagine it will be the same for plant-based and non-plant-based to make yeah. it simple for the kitchen. So I imagine, you know, it's going to be, you know, something that has maybe Fantasmic and a little gold dip on a chocolate disc on it. Yeah. So yeah. add in, what, $5 for that? So you've spent about $25 yeah. in food and then $10 for your spot. I don't think that's bad to say that I'm going to save time. Yeah, I was going to say exactly the same. That that was kind of like doing my own little totting up in my head. And I'm thinking, yeah, so your cost of your food is going to come out between 23 and $26, something along those lines. Yeah, so tenor to get that seating. And like you say, when your time is precious and you've not got that many days in the park, and it's that's not a vast amount of money compared to what they could be asking for these type of um, reserve seating things, isn't it? True. On the flip side, I know there's a similar package for World of Colour where you have a dessert-type party mm. where you can get standing or you can get seating. That, in my mind, hasn't got the value because it's over $100. It's a lot of money. Right, I yeah. didn't really think the food was great. It has alcohol with it, which I might not be partaking in. So I think this one is the go-to package for those of you like me. Got one day in Disneyland, you want to be able to see fireworks and Fantasmic. So hopefully you've got a little bit of dodging around the schedule there, but it could make it possible for you. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good deal actually. Especially say if if in into the park they're going, they're asking upwards a hundred purely because obviously there's alcohol and you haven't and it is a desserts only. Whereas at least with this, you know, it's going to take the place of you know having your dinner isn't it you know so you're going to be spending at least 25 probably or even if you said 20 dollars on food at some point during the day so it's not that much to then put on top to get that um uh, preferred viewing spot yeah so that's basically it for this week's show i would like to remind you all that our show is brought to you keeping it sponsorship free from our wonderful friends that support the show patreon.com forward slash disney dream girls and you can join the ranks over there and help support us and get in return extra audio content we are also on instagram and twitter at this dream girls and our website is disneydreamgirls.com we also have our disney dream girls podcast family where we chat about our lives of disney and our members share their wonderful holiday snaps plans and questions as we said at the beginning of the show we're going to share 
a little bit of music from the maestro Tom Amin. Don't forget you can find that album, Tom Amin Music, or on all good places where music can be downloaded. But until next week's show, it's a goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.